What's up guys, welcome back to another Energy League. For this video, I'm actually doing a review of my 5010 League, since I played it casually and wasn't recording. We all know Energy is an insane deck, and I think this league just solidifies how good it actually is. The Mardu list we're running has all the usual Energy cards, so nothing crazy here. The number of black cards that Mardu runs tend to fluctuate, but today we're running a single Thoughtseize, which may look weird, and then we have four Bowmasters also. For the sideboard, we have the other three Thoughtseize. These are for control and combo decks. We have two Orms Chant. This is for big mana decks, combo decks also. One Dranith Magistrate for combo decks. Two Exercise for artifacts, enchantments, and huge creatures. We have one Stony Silence. This is typically for Belcher, but you can bring this in against any main artifact deck. Two Thraben Charm for graveyard decks and enchantments. The fourth One Ring. You bring this in against the Mirror and other aggro decks. Two Spell Bombs for graveyard decks. And then finally, we are a Gigantha deck. So that's just a quick rundown of Mardu Energy. I want to remind you guys that we are part of the content creator program now, so we have lots of play points to give away to our subs. And if you're interested in becoming a YouTube channel member, you get access to cool perks like loyalty badges, emotes, and early access to new videos. So if you want to see more content like this and you want to win some play points, make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's get in the gameplay. All right, so this is match one. Opponent Mulligans to six. This is kind of a medium hand, but we decide to keep it because we have Elegant Parlor to Surveil, and then we have a decent curve into Flage. You could definitely mulligan this hand because four lands is a lot trying to find a one drop, but we decide to keep it. So we start with the surveil land. We see a galvanic discharge and we put that into the yard because we're looking for threats right now. We don't know what we're up against. We see lush portico. My first thought is living end, but then we see windswept teeth and then we're not so sure. We draw bow masters, not really what we want, but we're just going to slam a Johnny, get the pressure on. I put it plays forest into birthing ritual. So we're like, oh, it's this deck. So this is like Naya ritual combo. We draw bombardment again, not really what we want. We can play a land. Let's see what we do. We play a land. We can flip a Johnny, and that's what we try to do. But then they evoke Solitude in response, pitching White Orchid Phantom. So I'm not too familiar with this deck, so maybe we play it slowly and assume that they have Solitude. So they do that. We pass the turn. Now they play Renegade Rallyer, so they're going to be getting a lot of value here. They sack Renegade Rallyer for Enchanter to blow up Goblin Bombardment, which we don't really care too much about because we don't have a board presence anyway. Like, if that's their best play, then whatever. We surveil, we find a one ring, obviously going to keep that on top, and then we're just going to slam the one ring here, get the value going. We draw another goblin bombardment, which is pretty funny. They play voice of resurgence, they sack it, get recruiter, get elemental token. Really good value there with voice, birthing ritual, and recruiter. We get the ring trigger. We just draw three lands in a row, which is like, at this point, not looking too, too good. Like, yeah, we have the ring. We're just going to boatmasters clear this, that way they can't recur this. If they have like a flicker effect. So they let that go. We shock that in and then we're just going to flage. We're trying to clear their board so that way birthing ritual is worse. We take out their creatures that way it turns off their Safi value. So there's Safi. So that's why we took out Witch Enchanter. We're just going to double block again. We want to get the creatures off the board. That way if they want a ritual they have to sack Safi. So they choose not to. We don't know if they found anything or they just choose not to sack it. So ring triggers. We draw Guide of Souls which is really good. And then we just draw a lot. So we're just going to play out all our spells guide of souls they evoke solitude which is like a cool combo here so they evoke solitude sack safi solitude comes back and they get to solitude the other guide of souls so now we have a million lands in play they play another birthing ritual they don't attack which i think is weird so they sack solitude they find renegade rallier get back voice resurgence they sack voice get back extraction or find extraction get back safi get a token the value train is like insane right now. So we're feeling pretty far behind. We've drawn so many lands. We do have an active ring, fortunately, and we have a lot of life to work with. So we draw another land and I'm like, come on. But now we draw four cards. So now we're cooking. Like, how do we, how do we lose from here? Right? So we start with Ocelot Pride. Going to be gaining a lot of life. Now we have the city's blessing. So we're going to discharge this now. So that way when they sack it, we know what they're going to target. So we don't kill it with Flage. So they target the specialist. We don't have to use any energy. So now we're going to Flage, Renegade Rallier, get all the triggers, and they just concede there. So we didn't outright win right there, but the value was just like too insane for them. All right, for game two, we decide to keep this hand. Again, it's another four land hand, but because we know they're a creature heavy deck, we can surveil and turn one if we need to. We have removal. We have like three removal cards here. So totally fine with this keep. Just going to play like the control game. We have Static Prison for Birthing Ritual. Drawing another land, not very good. We're just going to surveil. We surveil and a Johnny to the top, which is great. They shock in Temple Garden for Voice of Resurgence. We're just going to play out a Johnny. Nothing too hard about it. They surveil again with Lush Portico. They put Extraction Specialist in the yard. And then they play White Orchid Phantom. And they kill our theater. We don't care. We have so many lands. That's like the best case scenario. So now we can shock in Sacred Foundry. We're just going to eat 
So it's funny too, we eat Voice of Resurgence. We should have eaten uh, Weight Orchid Phantom. Because now we just kill their 2-2 two -two and they get another 2-2 two -two instead of just killing this outright. But it's fine. They attack. We do decide to trade here. They could have a Solitude, but we don't care if they, they want to pitch it to kill this. We're fine with that value. But they have nothing. They play Renegade Rally or they get back Voice. So we draw Exercise. Alright, so we zero Johnny, play another land. We discharge Weight Orchid Phantom, and then we just chill. So they play Rumble. They find Solitude, which is kind of annoying. And they attack us instead of a Johnny. We do block. It creates a 3-3. A three, three. Like, looking back, did we need to block? I'm not entirely sure, because then we could kind of get a larger spread of creatures. Maybe I thought it was going for a Johnny. So we just get another Surveil Land. We find Discharge. We keep that on top. Pretty easy keep. And we have Flage in the graveyard, too. So we have Flage plus Arena. Yeah, we had five cards plus Flage. So we definitely could have Hasty Flaged. But instead, we decided to just zero a Johnny. Oh, I know why. So because they had Solitude, that's why we didn't Flage there. Like, we would get the three. We would, like, kill Renegade Valor, and then they just Solitude it. Recruiter of the Guard. They get another Safi. Or they get a Safi. They don't attack. Again, the, sometimes they attack, sometimes they don't. I don't really understand what their thought process is. So they're going to play out Safi here, and then we're just going to Surveil. Find another Flage. We're going to put that in. Oh, so we, we Surveil Flage. We actually keep that on top as a um, removal spell. Which I think is fine. And then here they use Solitude. So now we're like, okay, that's just good game here. Because they the Solitude, or the Flage is face up here in the graveyard. So we're just going to play Arena, zero, and then they just concede. All right, so this is match two against Red Green Delirium. Again, this is our third four land hand. But because we have a nice curve, we're going to keep it. So we're just probably going to Sacred Foundry into Guide of Souls. Pretty straightforward play in the blind. Opponent goes stomping ground. We're like, okay, God of Souls is going to be dead. But they play DRC, which is really nice, easy target for discharge. We draw another discharge, which is good because this is going to be a creature heavy matchup. So we attack, see if they want to trade. And then I think we just discharge and then we're going to surveil with this land. So we kill DRC, which is really good value. They tar fire our Guide of Souls. We surveil a Guide of Souls to the top. Okay, so this is the kind of unfortunate match where they just kept a one lander. And they just never see another land. Maybe like towards the end, but this is like a pretty free win here. They play another DRC. They're like looking for lands. They bubble themselves looking for a land. They don't find it. So we're going to surveil again. Arena of Glory. We put that in the yard. We don't need any more lands. We already have uh, the one ring. So we're going to kill this again. So that way they don't have any surveil value. We're going to attack and then we're just going to slam the one ring down. Because there's like no way they're beating this, right? And then we have double Bowmasters. Looking pretty good. They play Patrick Beastie and just pass. So they miss their land again. It's turn five. We draw Ocelot Pride. Draw two lands with the one ring. Play out Pride. Now we just have a million Bowmaster triggers. Guide of Souls is flying. And we're just going to do this now just to uh, get the city's blessing. So that way Ocelot Pride triggers better. And then we just pass. I think they find the land here. Okay, they don't find the land. They cycle Footfall Crater and then just concede. Pretty clear stopping here with the one lander. So game two... Again, another four land hand. Do we keep this one? All right, we do keep this one. We've kept four four land hands because we just have a lot of early play. And this is why this deck is so good. Because regardless of like what your curve looks like, these cards are just so innately powerful. You could definitely mulligan this. It's not like the worst thing to do, but you have removal, you have threats. It's fine. You have surveil lands. If these weren't like fetches, maybe we'd mull. They just go wooded foothills go. And we draw Amp Raptor. So now our curve is just Ocelot Pride and Amp Raptor, which is insane. Very easy. They surveil. They surveil land to the yard. Now they don't want lands. They start with a rumble and they choose Soul Guide Lantern. So they bring in the Flage Hate, which we're totally fine with this. And like, look at this right here. Now we're just like, this is insane. So now the question is, do we play out Amp Raptor or do we play out a Johnny here? And I think that's one of the plays I've been struggling with. One of the decision points. So what's cool about this is you're expecting them to block sack or just not block at all. So that way they don't... Uh, trigger lifelink but they don't sack it so we do get the lifelink there which is nice so we decided to play out ocelot pride instead of using our mana and playing a two drop the reason you can do this is because if you're afraid of board wipes or if you just want to surveil for more threats or you could just play out amp raptor and just kind of get the cascade value and just eat the board wipe but so we decided to play out ocelot pride we maximize our cat value here i think either i think any one of those plays is fine you guys let me know if you would do something different so they cycle Oliphant, they play out Soul Guide Lantern, or they crack Soul Guide Lantern drawing a card, and we draw another Ajani. So here I think I play out Amp Raptor, but 
looking back, I think I want to play out an Ajani just because we have two of them. But we get him with everything. We do play an Amp Raptor, trying to like high roll something, but we just hit another Amp Raptor. So now our board looks insane. So like, how do we lose from here? You guessed it. Board wipe. They play Fear Fire Foes. So to play around this, we could have just played out a Johnny. We're definitely going to play something. We're not going to just do nothing. You honestly could. Our board is pretty insane to where we don't need to just play out stuff if we think there's a board wipe. So they play Fear Fire Foes, wipe our entire board. So if we had played out a Johnny previously, we'd have a Johnny and Amp Raptor to rebuild. Now we just have a Johnny. So now we're just going to surveil. But again, this is why this deck is so insane. Like our top decks are just so good. Now we just get to literally rebuild. We're just going to play out everything. A Johnny, Ocelot Pride, and then just pass the turn. They play a Patchwork Beastie into Footfall. So they give this haste. So they're going to be swinging for six. We're going to chump here to try to flip a Johnny, which happens. A Johnny flips. We play out another Johnny. We plus. We give all our cats plus one plus one, make a million cats. So right now, like, we just got our entire board wiped. And now we're just, this is what our board looks like, which is insane. They play Rumble. They find another Beastie. But they also find Detective's Phoenix. So they attack a Johnny, which is fine. So Johnny goes down. It already got its value. On our turn, we draw Thraben Charm. We decide to Static Prison the Eldrazi spawn token to avoid any chump blocking. And because we're at such a high life total and we're going to be getting more life, and we have Thraben Charm to just exile their graveyard. So we just decide to go all out here. We put them to one, trigger cat tokens. So there's like no way they're winning this, right? And they concede. Even without Thraben Charm, they would get in for not lethal and then they're dead on the crackback. But Thraben Charm just seals the deal. All right, so in match three, we see Kihira. The first thing we think of is elementals. So to my surprise, this is actually blue white control. They lead off on a tapped hallowed fountain, so it's a little sketch already. This hand is a this hand was a pretty easy keep. We have Ocelot Pride, Removal, Amp Raptor, a few lands, and then we draw another land here. So this is going to be a turn one Ocelot Pride. Opponent plays Island Pass. So we're assuming they have a counterspell up. We play our land. We're not going to be playing to the counterspell. We're just going to attack, get that Ocelot Pride value, and just pass the turn. So you could argue Thought Seizing here, but there's really no point because we're going to surveil and then try to double spell next turn. All right, so a lot just happened. on their. So we passed. On their turn, they ousted our Ocelot Pride. And then at the end of their turn, we cast Bowmasters, which resolved. So now we're back to our turn. We play a land. We're just going to lead off on a Thought Seize here. We see that they have Counterspell, Solitude. They have no white card to pitch to Solitude, and they're just sitting on a Counterspell. What would you guys take here? So I think the answer is pretty obvious. In my opinion, we take Solitude. So we take the removal spell. We already have a little board presence here. We don't have to play into their Counterspell, and we just have so many uh, like cheap value cards that if they Counterspell something, it really doesn't matter. So we just get in with everything. They fetch a tap land. So it's weird. They're not really playing any Surveil lands. I don't know why they're not playing Meticulous Archives. They play the land we knew about. We're going to Surveil here. Get Elegant Parlor. Land to the graveyard. We draw another land. We're kind of flooding here. We're just going to attack for three. Put Gigant at a hand. We're, again, we're not playing into Counterspell. So we actually Surveilled. We Surveilled another land to the yard too. So we've drawn like a million lands. So fortunately, they're not drawing very well either. They just play Castle Vantress and Pass. We draw Johnny, which is pretty good. So now we get to double spell, I believe. I'm trying to think if we... So we lead off on a Johnny. Oh no, we lead off on Amp Raptor to get countered. It doesn't. We hit Ocelot Pride, which is hilarious. These cards are just insane. And then we just pass. So because they didn't counter this, we're just like, we could play this in a counter spell. By not playing a Johnny, we let them Castle Vantress. So maybe that's not the greatest, but they're also looking for a board wipe. So we don't want to overextend. So they play a land and they just pass the turn. So right now, like the game's over. They're not dead on board, but we're just going to attack and pass. And then if they do happen to find a board wipe, we would just end of turn Bowmasters and they lose anyway. So they're going to Castle Vantress here. They keep putting um, two to the bottom each time, so they're definitely not finding what they need. They crack, go to one. We're just holding Bowmasters. We don't have to cast it right now. They scry two, both to the bottom, and then they concede. All right, so this hand against Blue White Control, not the greatest hand. So we mulligan it into this insane hand. Very easy keep. Then we put Static Prison to the yard. Yeah, Static Prison goes back to the deck. Pretty good curve. They just go Misty Go. We draw the Shattery Backstreet. So we're going to lead off on Guide of Souls. We want to get the Guide of Souls Ocelot Pride value going as soon as possible. They just go Island Pass. We draw Theater. So we attack for one. And we're totally fine with this exchange. So we play out Ocelot Pride, assuming they have a counter spell. A good one for two mana value there. And then we surveil Flays into the yard. So looking pretty good for us. Like we know they have a counter spell. We have to get out of their hand. And it's worth it to just make that trade. They play Narset and they find another Oust. We draw a Johnny. 
So we play out a Johnny, get a lot of Guide of Souls triggers. We're going to attack Narset down to two, and then we surveil a static prison to the uh, graveyard. So you could keep that for Narset, but we're just going to attack and kill it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So we know they have an oust. They decide to oust a Johnny. It's a little awkward for us because we draw the, we have fetch lands, but we're not going to crack it because we would just surveil into a Johnny. Like, that's what we'd want anyway. We decide to kill Narset. Or Narset just down ticks and finds a counter spell. So now we know the they have a counter in hand. We're just going to attack like this and pass. And then end of turn, going to Bowmasters. They counter spell. So we cast Bowmasters. They actually counter spell the Bowmasters at their end step, which I think is interesting. We play another land. So we play a Johnny. We get all these triggers. We attack, give this flying, play Goblin Bombardment. We flip a Johnny, make cats, ping them down. And then at this point, they, they're only sitting on three lands. It's turn six. They play out to Fairy. They try to bounce Guide of Souls. We just sack at the Bombardment so they don't draw. We ping them and then they're just dead on board. All right, so this is our seven. We do decide to keep this. We have a lot of removal, which I think is fine with Flage as well. We have Surveil Lands, so we keep this. We see Hedge Maze and we're like, ugh, Living End. This hand is the worst against Living End. We have like three dead spells here for the most part. So we're kind of sad. So we just lead off and then we draw another Static Prison. So we're just like, we're losing game one. So we play Marsh Flats, intending to Surveil with it. But then, opponent just does nothing. We get a Shattery Backstreet because we have Sacred Foundry in hand. We keep the land on top, definitely with the land, and we're just going to play Sacred Foundry into uh, a Johnny, I believe. So they still haven't done anything. Now they play another land, and then we see Blighted Agent. So we're just super happy because our hand, it just lines up so well against Infect. We do make a couple mistakes on the following turn, though, or one mistake, you guys will see. So we play the land, we cast Static Prison. They're going to play Apostle's Blessing, gives a protection from white. Now we're going to discharge in response. So what we should have done was let this resolve, first of all. Now we discharge. They play Mutagenic Growth. So now this is a 3-3. Three, three. We're fine with this because this can still kill it. But then they play another Mutagenic Growth. And we're like, okay, now we have Discharge. So we let that resolve. Deal 3 to that. Oh, actually, you know what? This was one of the mistakes. We're like, oh, we have Static Prison. We can just save this energy. But Apostle's Blessing gives us Pro White. So here's the mistake. We crack this, thinking like, oh, we're just going to Static Prison it. Cast Static Prison, still pro white. So <laughs> definitely a mistake. We say oops over here. So the play was to just Galvanic Discharge it and save Static Prison. So we just wasted Static Prison. We still have a Discharge though. So not the biggest deal, but definitely a, a pretty big mistake. We get him for three, pass the turn. We made them use two pump spells and a protection spell, which is really nice. But of course we could just outright die. So you attack for one, pass the turn. We have two removal spells, which is good too. Static Prisons, we let both of them die. And we draw a land for turn. So we get a planes here. We're just going to flage one of these and then discharge the other. Oh, so again, so this was another mistake. The way we tapped, we got a planes. We should have gotten another, or we should have gotten a red source here. So that way we could have discharged and flaged. But because we got a planes, we couldn't cast discharge. So that's two mistakes. But again, this deck is so good that we can make a couple mistakes and kind of still get there. We're also up against Infect, which isn't the greatest deck. They play Rot Priest. Mutagenic Growth, get him for three. We draw a Mountain. We have Discharge for this. So we attack with all, put them to one. We have Flage in the Yard. So that's just lethal. And we get there. All right, so for game two, we have five lands. Turn one, turn two, zero removal. Definitely have the Mulligan this hand. This hand is four lands and two Thraben Charm and a Johnny. So we have to go to five. This hand is pretty solid. Only one removal, but we have to keep this. We're not going to go to four. And then we just decide to keep God of Souls, Asa Pride, Raptor, try to kind of high roll aggro them. Flage is probably too slow, so that's why we put that back. So they go turn one, Noble Hierarch. We're just going to lead off on God of Souls, pretty easy. They play Ink Moth into Blighted Agent into Venerated Rock Priest. So they have a really good start, really wide start. We have Bowmasters, so we don't do anything. We're just going to hold open Bowmasters. We could Amp Raptor, we could Ocelot Pride and Surveil as another play. They play another Rock Priest and another Noble Hierarch. So this is awkward because now they have Blighted Agent and two Exalted triggers. So they're going to get in for three here. Oh, uh, so, oh yeah, this was the mistake. So we tap this for white, and then we accidentally get a Sacred Foundry, and we can't untap Godless Shrine. So end of turn, we meant to Bowmasters, and because we tapped this and couldn't untap it with the whole fetching system here, we just got a Sacred Foundry, shocked, and did nothing. So that was unfortunate. We draw a land. So now we're just going to play Bowmasters. Trigger God of Souls. We're going to kill Blighted Agent so that way they can't get any free attacks in. 
and then we're going to Ocelot Pride. So another play you could make there is just playing Ocelot Pride and still holding up Bowmasters, so that way when Blighted Agent attacks, we can Bowmasters it. The downside to that is it lets them untap and let them use green pump spells. The other downside is now Ink Moth Nexus is available to attack. So there's a lot of like different plays here, but we don't have anything for flying. And then if we are afraid of Ink Moth, they can still untap and pump it and protect it from Bowmaster. So we just decided to do the sorcery, get rid of Agent play. We trigger Ocelot Pride, not that the life matters. So they play another Ink Moth, which is really scary. They get him for three. We can't do anything about this. We're up to six, in fact. They play a Glistener Elf and a Blighted Agent. So we're just like, screw it at this point, right? Or draw a Reno of Glory, not very good. So we're going to have to haste Amp Raptor. Hopefully hit something amazing. Trigger Guide of Souls. What do we hit? We hit another Amp Raptor. So we're 0 for 2 with Amp Raptors this league. We're just going to cast that. So now what we have to do is not attack with Guide of Souls. So we only attack with these two. We don't attack with the Flyer because we're intending to hold that back to block an Ink Moth. And then we give this flying instead of Ocelot Pride, which is, I think, another mistake because they could just easily block this here. They choose not to, which is interesting. But we definitely should have given this flying because this has first strike. So we pass, this triggers, get a Guide of Souls triggers. So now we're at six poison. We're dead to like any pump spell. But now because they don't have it, they can only attack with Blighted Agent. Put us to nine. So we're at nine poison. We're one away. And what do we draw? A Johnny. So Johnny's a great draw because we get to flip it. Potentially. We potentially get to flip it. So is there a way that our opponent can block so that they don't die and they don't flip a Johnny? So we attack with everything. Guide of Souls. We pump up the Amp Raptor here. They activate Ink Moth twice. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six blockers. They can block here, 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 here. So they can block one, two, three, four. And they would take four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think they just miscounted. So we should be dead here. So they block like this. This is fine because this is the most damage. The problem here is they decide to block cats. If they only blocked here, they would take three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so we should have been dead, I believe. They decide to block a cat. We get to flip a Johnny, zero a Johnny, and then just ping them for lethal. So we probably should have been dead there. Their draw was like really good with all the uh, unblockable creatures. And then ours was obviously solid too, but unblockable just like beats us. So that was fortunate. All right, so now for the 5-0 trophy match, we have two lands. We have a turn one play, turn two. This hand is fantastic. So we're going to keep this. We're definitely going to lead off on Sacred Foundry, Guide of Souls, as usual. Opponent plays Planes Go. So we assume this is like taxes. We assume this is some mono white deck. So we draw Orcus Bowmasters. We're going to get him for one, and then we're going to play a Johnny. Pretty easy play. With a Johnny on the stack, they solitude it pitching Witch Enchanter. So now we know it's like taxes or something. And we see Flagstone, so we know it's like land destruction, taxes, Ghost Quarter, that kind of thing. White Orchid Phantom, which fortunately we have a lot of basics, so we don't care about this. And they eat their own Flagstone, so they ramp, they get Elegant Parlor. We draw a third land, which is nice, so we can double spell. So we discharge the Phantom. Attack, give this flying to get this out of bolt range, if that's even a thing. But they're mostly on exile with solitude, and then pass the turn. They play the Ghost Quarter and Giver of Runes. End of turn, we're going to Bowmasters them, ping them down to 13. And our board is looking really good. We draw another Bowmasters. So what we could do here is Bowmasters main phase, get the energy and give something else flying. But we don't decide to do that. All right, so they have a Ganjo. So obviously we're not playing around a Ganjo. With that on the stack, we do cast Bowmasters, but casting it pre-combat to get the energy to give something else flying was probably the better play. But we cast this now to get the energy, get the life gain. Totally fine. And then they just concede. They only have one card in hand, so I guess that wasn't looking good for them. All right, game two of the final match. Again, we have a pretty solid hand. We have removal or threats. So we decide to keep this. Opponent leads off on planes, Aether Vial. We draw another land. I think we just go Ocelot Pride Pass. Yep. Just get the stuff down. Get our threats down. No big deal. They play Flagstones into Stoneforge Mystic. So this is a good Static Prison target because they get Cauldra. So we Static Prison, get rid of Stoneforge Mystic. Pretty easy play there. And that lets us get in for one. We surveil a Gotha Shrine into the yard. They take up Aether Vial. So here's where it gets a little tricky. I know we don't attack with Ocelot Pride. They have Aether Vial on two. So they could flash in like White Orchid Phantom. So we're afraid of that. We really don't want to lose our Ocelot Pride like that. And we have no removal. So we decide to Amp Raptor here. And again, three for three, we've hit three Amp Raptors. That's pretty crazy this league. We've only hit Amp Raptors with it. 
So we play surveil land, we surveil land to the yard, and then we don't attack. And then there's the white orchid phantom that we were afraid of. Good heads up play by us. They take this up to three, which is fine because they have two lands and then that on three. They don't attack, so they're planning on playing defense. We draw another land. We've surveilled la like all these lands to the yard and we've drawn just a million lands, so kind of annoying. We decide to play Bombardment, but then they play Avon Interrupter to get rid of it. We attack with these anyway because we want to trade these off if possible. We're looking to surveil with this. They find their third land and then they Wrath the Skies X equals one. So they clear Static Prison and Ocelot Pride and their Aether Vial. So we get a surveil land. We surveil another land to the yard. So we've just gotten rid of three lands here. We've drawn nothing but lands. Our hand is just terrible. Like, I don't know how we're going to get out of this, to be honest. They have an active Stoneforge Mystic next turn. We draw Flage, which is how we get out of this, because we're going to Flage Stoneforge Mystic. That way they can't get Cauldra. So that was a really good top deck by us. And we have Flage next turn in the yard. So we attack with everything. They take it. They play Lion Sash. So this is kind of sad. When they got Stoneforge Mystic back, this is what they fetched. I forgot to mention that. So now Flage is just gone. So it was, a, it was like a gain three for three. Get rid of Stoneforge Mystic spell. They pump that. Now they're getting in four threats because now they have Lion Sash to block. Can you guess what we draw? Another land. <laughs> so we've drawn a million lands in Flage. We have Goblin Bombardment we can still cast. So that's what we do. Then they cast Solitude. Or they evoke Solitude. Getting rid of a Raptor. We put Gigantha to hand. Play a land and pass. So now they get in with everything. Makes sense. We're just gonna fetch this just to thin our deck. Get a guy that's right and tapped. We draw Bowmasters. So not a very good draw. Play Aether Hub out. We play Gigantha. We can hold up Bowmasters. So now we have something to chump here. They just pump this, pump this, eat everything in the yard. So what's cool about Bowmasters is we can chump a bunch of times with Lion Sash against Lion Sash. They play Ghost Quarter. We float, get a basic, and then just flash in Bowmasters now. So we ping them. So they don't attack with Lion Sash because they're dead on the crackback, but they attack in the air, and we draw a Guide of Souls, which is just Chef's Kiss, right? Because they attacked with both of their flyers, they see Guide of Souls, and they can see it on the spot. So that was an amazing top deck. So we can attack with all, give this flying, and then just ping them for lethal. So we saw mostly lands, but somehow we pulled it off because, again, this deck is ridiculous. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this league review of Mardu Energy in Modern. It's always interesting going back and rewatching games play by play. You get to see some solid plays, but also catch some potential mistakes and maybe see some other lines that you could have taken. But as you guys already know, energy is insane and we just steamrolled through everyone. Let me know in the comments section if you enjoy these types of videos or if you want to see more energy content. But that'll do it for me. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Peace.